A couple of days more and Navratri season will roll out in full glory. While it signifies celebrations and galore, it also marks the beginning of the fasting days. The recipe I'm going to be making today is a fasting recipe straight out of my mom's kitchen and I call it the Upvas Ka Dhokla. First, I'm going to warm up some buttermilk. Don't boil it, just warm it for 30-40 seconds. I have some washed samo or bhagar or mordhan, whatever you call it. So I have a cup of this. Make sure you wash it properly. The buttermilk is warmed up now. And I'm going to mix it in this. If you warm the buttermilk for very long, it might just curdle. So make sure it's just for 30-40 seconds. And keep this aside for at least half an hour to soak. This mixture has been soaking for half an hour. And now I'm just going to lightly grind it in the blender. Just once or twice. And this is done. Remove it again in this bowl. Before you mix all the other ingredients, make sure you have a pot of water that is boiling. Also, I have like an 8 inches thali over here that I've just greased with oil. And now I'm going to season this batter. So I have some ginger chilli paste. Salt. Mix the two together. Lemon juice. Don't stir in the lemon juice yet. On top of this, I'm also going to add some Eno fruit salt. So one sachet. Mix it properly. Pour this batter into this thali. And just give it a light stir. And straight on the boiling water. Steam the dhokla for 15 minutes on high flame. Fifteen minutes are done and I'm going to open this. Let's get this out. Let it rest for 15 minutes before we do the tadka. Fifteen minutes are now over and now I'm going to cut them. So, just clean them up from the rim of the thali. And now the tadka. Heat up a little bit of oil. Once the oil is nice and hot, Add a couple of boria chilies or round chilies or any dry red chilies that you have. Also a few curry leaves. Just add a couple of tablespoons of water. Be very careful.
just a little bit of sugar. Let the sugar dissolve in the water and this is done. Pour this tadka over the dhokla and let it absorb all the water. Also garnish it with coriander leaves and freshly grated coconut. Gear up for the festive season and enjoy your fast with a little bit of health and taste. With that, this is Ruchi signing off. See you next time. Bye-bye. Ancient Indian festivals and rituals advocate fasting on days like the Ekadashi and the Navaratras. And if you are one of those who fast on these days, you will love the pulao that I'm going to be making for you today using the Indian Banyad millet, also known as Bhagar, Varai, Samo or Pratke Chawal in many Indian languages. So let's begin. I'm going to put in 440 grams, which is about two cups of barnyard millet. Stir it until the millets are nicely roasted. Roasting the millets this way ensure that they turn out nice and fluffy and do not stick to each other when cooked. This millet is technically a seed, so it makes it perfect for the days of fasting. It's been about 8 to 10 minutes, the millets are nicely roasted and I'm going to transfer this to a bowl. Let's keep this aside for a bit and allow it to cool down. To bring in some flavour into the pulao that we are making, let's roast some spices. So I'm going to put in 6 cloves. The seeds of six cardamom pods, a teaspoon of cumin seeds, about eight to ten peppercorns, an inch stick of cassia. If you don't have it, you can use cinnamon. I'm going to roast this for about three to four minutes until the spices are aromatic. And now on to my favorite step, pounding the spices with my mortar and pestle. Let's get started with preparing the pulao. We've taken about 440 grams, nearly half a kilo of warai. So I'm going to need about four to five tablespoons of ghee. Once the ghee melts, I'm going to stir in a teaspoon of freshly grated ginger, one crushed green chili, give it a good stir. And then put in two carrots. Two bell peppers that have been chopped. Half a cup of cabbage. And two potatoes that have been peeled and cubed into small pieces. If you don't eat these vegetables when you're fasting, you can just use the potatoes or you could skip that as well. I'm going to cover the lid and cook the vegetables for about 3 to 4 minutes. Wash the millets nicely. It's been about three to four minutes and the vegetables are partially cooked. And into the vegetables, I'm going to pour in four cups of water and allow this to come to a boil. 
the water has begun to boil and into the simmering water I'm going to put in two and a half teaspoons of salt. I'm using powdered sea salt, the powdered spices, give it a good stir. And then I'm going to squeeze in the juice of one lime. And finally, in goes the washed millet. I'm going to mix all this up together. Lower the heat, put on the lid and allow this to cook on low heat for about 15 to 20 minutes. The aroma of the spices wafting through the air when the lid is opened is so comforting. Millets, apart from being one of the oldest, are also one of the healthiest foods for us. So even if you're not fasting, try and include millets in your diet and give me your feedback in the comments below. Until then, happy cooking and healthy eating. Hello and welcome to Rajshi Food. I'm Ruji Bharani and in this episode, we are making a very simple breakfast snack called the Sabudana Khichdi. In India, sabudana khichdi is also eaten during fasts and sabudana is also known as tapioca sago. Let's see what we have here. One tablespoon oil, one teaspoon jeera or cumin seeds, six to seven curry leaves, four green chilies roughly chopped, two to three teaspoons of sugar, lemon juice, coriander leaves, three fourth cup of coarsely ground roasted peanuts, two potatoes boiled and chopped, one cup sabudana or tapioca sago. First, we'll start with soaking the sabudana. Wash the sabudana thoroughly. I've already washed them. And take a flat plate to soak them. Sabudana can be very tricky, so be careful on the amount of water that we use. Spread the sabudana in your plate and sprinkle a little bit of water just in the level of the sabudana. Not too much. Stir them in and spread them. Sabudana takes at least six to seven hours of soaking time. So make sure you leave them aside and if you feel they're drying out too much in the middle, just sprinkle a little more water. But be very careful with the amount of water that you add. I already have pre-soaked sabudana over here. The first trick to make this recipe is to mix all the ingredients into the sabudana and not while cooking. So let's do that. Two to three teaspoons of sugar as per your liking, salt, coriander leaves, coarsely ground roasted peanuts and a generous squeeze of lemon juice. Very lightly mix all these ingredients with a spoon or with your hand. Try not to break the sabudana and this mixture is ready. So let's start cooking. Heat one tablespoon of oil. After the oil is nice and hot, we'll add the cumin seeds, curry leaves and green chilies. After a few seconds, we'll add the chopped boiled potatoes. Let the potatoes cook for at least one or two minutes. Just a hint of brown colour. The potatoes are ready now. I'm going to turn off the flame because we don't want too much of heat because the overcooked sabudana are going to get very starchy and sticky. And now I'm going to add this mixture and very quickly mix this in the hot pan. And now I'm going to just cover this and let it cook. And I'm also going to turn on the flame on just slow flame. Don't let this cook for more than two minutes. If you want to serve this sabudana khichdi a little later, turn off the flame, mix all the ingredients and leave it. And whenever you want to serve it, reheat it, cover it for two minutes 
and then serve hot. Let's check on them. And it's ready. I hope you enjoy this breakfast recipe and do comment below. Also don't forget to subscribe. Till next time, take care, bye bye. A festive season is always incomplete without something sweet to eat. We've all been kheer lovers since the time we've tasted it, haven't we? So today let me show you the very interesting and easy to make recipe for the Loki ki kheer. I'm going to start with heating some ghee first. So in a hot pan, around a couple of tablespoons of ghee. Once the ghee is nice and hot, I'm going to saute the loki that I've grated and lightly squeezed out all the water. The loki has been sauteing since a couple of minutes and now I'm going to add a liter of milk. This is full fat milk. Wow, that's a lot of milk. Stir it well. Let the milk boil for at least 5 to 6 minutes before we add the sugar. The loki or the bottle gourd is half cooked now and now I'm going to add some sugar. Let this cook for another 5 to 6 minutes. The milk is reduced to the desired quantity and now I'm going to add some cardamom powder. A few almond flakes. And turn off the flame. Let the kheer cool down completely and then you can add a few drops of rose water if you have some. And it's cooled down completely and now I'm going to add a few drops of rose water. This is ready to serve. And I'm going to serve them in these nice dessert bowls. Garnish it with a few almond flakes. Serve the kheer absolutely chill. Apart from being made during festivals, you can even make it during fast. Do try it at home. Comment below. See you next time. Bye bye. Hello and welcome to Divine Taste with Anushruti. Today I'm going to be making a payasam. A traditional South Indian Vedic recipe featuring three of my favorite ingredients moong dal, jaggery and coconut. This dish is nourishing, satisfying and full of taste. So let's get started with making moong dal payasam. This is about 210 grams, one cup of yellow moong dal and I'm going to roast this in a pan for about four to five minutes. Roasting the dal gives it a nutty flavor which enhances the taste of the payasam. As you can see, the dal has begun to change its color and I'm starting to get that wonderful aroma. I'm going to turn off the heat and allow this to cool down a bit. And the next step is to wash the dal. I'm going to put the washed dal into a pressure cooker and then I'm going to add two and a half cups of water and then I'm going to close the lid of my pressure cooker and cook the dal for about two whistles. While the dal cooks, 
Let's make some coconut milk. This is about one cup which is about 100 grams of freshly grated coconut and into this I'm going to put one cup 250 ml of lukewarm water. You need to allow this to rest for about 10 to 15 minutes and this will ensure that all the coconut goodness seeps into the water. Now I'm going to transfer the coconut into my blender and grind it to a smooth paste. I'm going to transfer this coconut mixture into my strainer and extract the coconut milk. And this will be the first extract. Now I'm going to transfer the coconut back into my blender and repeat the process to get the second extract. I'm going to pour in a cup of water into my blender and grind this again. I'm going to pour this coconut mixture into another bowl to get the second extract. And it's ready. Woon dal is now cooked and now I'm going to transfer this into another pot. In goes 1 cup 220 grams of chagri. I'm going to stir this around until the jaggery melts. The moong dal and the jaggery have blended well together and now is the time to add some beautiful fresh coconut milk from the second extract. Now I'm going to stir this and bring this to a boil. After this comes to a boil, I'm going to lower the heat and add the coconut milk from the first extract. We need to cook this for just about 3 to 4 minutes more. To finish off this dish, I'm going to put in 2 tablespoons of ghee and when the ghee melts, I'm going to put in some cashews. And when the cashews turn a light golden brown, I'm going to put in some raisins. And when the raisins pop up, I'm going to turn off the heat and allow this to cool down a bit. To bring in that heavenly aroma that is so typical to Paisan, I'm going to put in some cardamom powder made from the seeds of 4 to 5 cardamom pods. And our moong dal Paisan is ready to serve. I'm just going to scatter the dry fruits all over the Paisan. Moong dal paisam is one of my personal favorites and I don't need a special occasion to make this dish. This exotic yet simple and comforting paisam is truly divine and every single person I've served this to has loved it and I hope you like it as well. In this fast and busy life, there are days where we have very limited time to cook. So this is one of the recipes from my mother's kitchen and it's really quick to make and it's called sweet potato khichdi. This recipe takes quite some time to cook on the flame 
So I'm going to cook it very quickly in the microwave and it takes 12 minutes to cook. So let's start mixing all the ingredients together. Grated potato goes in first. Grated sweet potato. I've taken two potatoes that I've grated and soaked it in water for 5 minutes to get rid of the extra starchiness. And I've also grated two sweet potatoes but don't soak it in water after grating. I'm also going to add 1 teaspoon ginger chilli paste, salt to taste, sugar, 2 to 3 teaspoons as per your liking, 1 whole lemon juice, mix everything well. Now I'm going to make the tempering for the khichdi. I'm going to heat 1 and a half tablespoon of oil. Once the oil is nice and hot, I'm going to add 1 teaspoon cumin seeds. Few curry leaves. I'm going to turn off the flame and quickly add roasted peanuts and I've coarsely ground them. Just stir them in for a few seconds. And now I'm going to mix this properly. I'm going to take a flat microwavable dish and I'm going to remove this mixture in it. Spread it properly. I'm going to cover it and microwave it. The piping hot khichdi is ready. So basically I've cooked this for 12 minutes in the microwave. 8 minutes with the lid and 4 minutes without the lid. But just keep stirring it after every 2 minutes. My favourite coriander leaves, lots of it. Mix it and it's ready to serve. While reheating this khichdi, remember that sprinkle a little bit of water and cover it and reheat it in the microwave for another 2 minutes so that it regains its moisture. This recipe can be eaten during fast. Don't you think it's really hassle-free with very simple ingredients? I'm sure you're going to try it at home and subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.